Let's discuss the upper extremities. The upper extremities are made of a scapula, a clavicle, a humerus, ulna and radius, many carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges. We first start with the, clav with the scapula. This is the posterior part of the scapula. The main piece that we can hold as a flat bone is the body of the scapula. This end that has three bumps is going towards the axilla. So this is my right scapula and then in here we have the humerus attaching and making a joint. Let's look at the back first. We have this long slender thing here. That's the spine of the scapula. This here on the um, narrow skinny end of the spinal scapula is the vertebral border or the median border of the scapula. On the other side here is the axillary or lateral border of the scapula and on top here is the superior border of the scapula. Here is the spine of the scapula, telling me it's the back. Below the spinal scapula, this area here is called the supra, the infraspinous fossa, and the one that's laying on top is known as the supraspinous fossa. If I follow the, scapula, the, the spine all the way to the end, we get to the acromion process that will articulate with the clavicle. On the other side, which is actually in the front, and we can poke it on ourselves here, that's known as the coracoid process, which means crow. That's how I often think of coracoid. A little raven on top there sitting. And then we have the glenoid cavity right in there. The underside on the anterior side is known as the subscapular fossa. Then here we have the humerus coming like that. The top is known as the head of the humerus. Right after the head of the humerus, where it's not round anymore, it's a little rougher, but it's still very wide. It's called the anatomical neck of the humerus. And then below here, where it's skinnier, after these bumps, we call that the surgical neck of the humerus because that is where we break the humerus. We have a bump on the front that's known as the greater tubercle and we have a bump that's more on the side, a little bit posterior, that's the lesser Third Down on the outside we have a little roughage and that's the deltoid tuberosity. And then as we go distal, it's a little bit complicated. These sides here are both the epicondyles. We have one that's medial and we have one that's lateral. The medial epicondyle will give us a rise for muscles that are in the front of the forearm, the lateral in the back of the forearm. Here we got a little edgy pulley sort of thing, and that's the round thing on the side is known as the capitulum. And then as we turn the humerus to the behind around, we see in the back we have the olecranon on the fossa. The olecranon on fossa is a place where the elbow proper, the olecranon on process of this bone with the hook here, which is the ulna, that olecranon on fits right in there. So that, and the ulna, that's the olecranon on process, and as we go this on the ulna, we have a little round head, and we have a styloid process at the edge. The radius is on the other side. On top we have a, a rounded area, and that's the head of the radius. Then we have a narrower piece as the neck, and then a bump. And the bump is the radial tuberosity. As we get distally, we only really look at the styloid process down here. Looking at the carpals, we have two main rows. We have a proximal row and a distal row. So I'm going to have a proximal carpal row for this class and a distal carpal row. These all have names, these bones, but we worry about that later. And then we get into the web of the hand, and those are the palm of the hand. That's where the metacarpals are. We start with one by the thumb side, two, three, four, five. And by the way, the thumb side is where the radius goes. That's very important. And lastly, in this section, the phalanges are right here. We have three rows, a proximal, a middle, and a distal row. But the thumb only has two, a proximal and a distal.